We're gone? Okay, we're on <laughs> for fibromyalgia. Research has discovered nerve pathology, and sometimes we were, uh, were not quite aware when the video started, so that was our fault, not our producer. So this is Dr. Martin Rutherford, chiropractor. Martin certified, Rutherford. Certified. <laughs> or certified functional medicine practitioner or chiropractor since like 1979. Okay, and I'm Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist. Get also back in our rhythm chiropractor. here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to talk about fibromyalgia today. Research has discovered nerve pathology. This is pretty cool. Um, fibromyalgia started out like with people not even believing that it existed. Then it was a then it was a muscle pain. Right. Then it was a muscle right. pain. That's what fibromyalgia means. It means pain in the muscle fibers. So then uh, then things started coming about on fibromyalgia. And, uh, and everybody's trying to do things with it. I'm a functional medicine practitioner. The functional medicine practitioners were looking at it from a certain perspective of diet and, and, and things of that nature. Dr. Gates is a board certified functional neurologist. I'm not sure what their take on it was at that point in time. Was it like the stress hormones early on or, or when did that start right. to happen? That was in the 2000s where they were really okay. talking about the stress hormones. And then our two professions got together in this office, Dr. Gates and I, and we started to do we, we really started heavily with fibromyalgia and not coincidentally, apparently, <laughs> peripheral neuropathy. Mm -hmm. And so there's a little story to this, fibromyalgia, peripheral neuropathy, and chronic fatigue. Those were the first three things we started with, which mm -hmm. are all kind of like this. And for those of you who aren't aware that 50% of fibromyalgia patients have peripheral neuropathy, you're going to become hyper aware of it in a few minutes here because of what Dr. Gates is, is going to tell you and what some of the new research has shown so it's so there's been like this full like evolution of fibromyalgia if you watch any of our other fibromyalgia uh talks you're gonna you're gonna hear about hashimoto's and how virtually every Hash fibromyalgia patient that walked in here has had hashimoto's how they've all had a bad gut problem which you may even get into today relative to this i think Possibly. and uh the gut is uh is a big issue and it doesn't have to be celiac it could be irritable bowel syndrome it could be whatever it is if you get a bad gut you got you have you have Hashimoto's and you have stress responses. Those are three things that are going to create the sensitivity in fibromyalgia and so many other symptoms that everybody thinks is like 80 different things. You can refer to our other talks on all those things. But this one is one more, uh, I would say leg on the table. This is like a, this is like something that's really important. Like the, like the Hashimoto's, like the stress response. So this is vastly important because so many of you out there with fibromyalgia have been told that nothing is wrong with you. It's all in your head. Your doctors don't understand you. They say, you know, we understand you have pain. Your pain is real. They may say that if you're lucky. You're put on medications. They may or may not work. You're told to exercise. Uh, unfortunately, those around you don't really understand your condition because all of your tests have been quote unquote normal. And in 2013, the data really came out that a significant percentage, upwards of half of fibromyalgia patients, have a nerve problem. You have a nerve problem. Fibromyalgia is not a muscle problem, it's a nerve problem, in at least half of you. And that's where your pain nerves are dying and degenerating. And think of it, when a nerve is on, when a nerve is dying, it's like it's on fire. That would be the analogy. So think of your pain nerves being on fire. And this is a huge explanation as to why so many of you are suffering and in pain that does not remit. Now, there are many other factors that go along with fibromyalgia, including, as Dr. Rutherford alluded to, autoimmune problems to the thyroid, gastrointestinal dysfunction as a source of inflammation. Uh, there can be circumstances earlier in life relative to childhood trauma and abuse. We talked about that last week. We've talked about that at length. Fibromyalgia is a multifactorial problem. It's not just like one thing, but this peripheral neuropathy issue is a huge issue because we see it all the time. And the current data is even more staggering on pain fiber dysfunction. So for example, if I touch Dr. Rutherford's hand, he can feel that I'm touching his hand because he has little receptors in his skin that sense pressure. Well, you also have little receptors throughout your body that sense pain. And it was, it was discovered in 2014 that upwards of 76% of fibromyalgia patients have abnormal pain receptor responses. So it's almost like your receptors are not functioning right as well. And when you put that on top of then at least half of you having small fiber neuropathy, in some studies they saw signs of it in almost all patients. 
but we'll say 50% to be conservative, then that really demonstrates that you have a peripheral problem to your pain and your pain is not just in your head. You're not faking your pain. And though this was discovered in 2013, it has been substantiated in multiple different research facilities across the country and across the world. Not a lot of people know about it. I gave a talk to a group of doctors about a month and a half ago. None of them had heard of it and they were rheumatologists. So these are people seeing fibromyalgia patients. I was presenting research article after research article and they were sitting there kind of amazed. Uh, you know, in our opinion, this should not be new information. This is old stuff. But it, we're talking about it because we want it to get out there to you as the fibromyalgia sufferer to kind of give you some understanding of your condition, to give some validity to your condition because a lot of you are searching for that. And also, we're almost done with the book on peripheral neuropathy, but there are new line therapies. There are new therapies to treat peripheral neuropathy, which involve stimulating nerves to grow back to life. And you have to also remove the underlying metabolic cause that's killing the nerves. And for so many fibromyalgia patients, what they're finding is that it's an immune problem. So the immune system seems to be the aggra aggravating factor as to why the small fiber nerves are dysfunctioning. So that pretty well, I think, sums up the issue regarding small fiber peripheral neuropathy and fibromyalgia. Did you want to add anything to that? My mind drifted. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not, it looks like I got one more day to go. I was were you talking? I, my mind drifted. You're talk, were you talking about peripheral neuropathy being a generator of fibromyalgia, or peripheral neuropathy yeah. being a generator of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? And the, I didn't get and into the, that and, and because that you can thing. see that in some cases, but that's not the entirety. More, more of you have gastrointestinal dysfunction in our experience because your fear center. Maybe you were exposed to horrible circumstances earlier in life. Maybe trauma. Maybe abuse. Maybe you watch somebody die, and then your fear center seems to get ignited, turned on. It can actually secrete cause through biochemical processes. Uh, stress hormones will go up dramatically, and then your fear center actually hardwired. It's a hardwired innervation of your gut, so that can shut off the gut. We have seen cases where people have too many bacteria in their intestines, and it's due to the small fiber neuropathy issue. Okay. And I, I don't know, maybe I drifted, maybe that was, I was like, the, so 50, I was thinking about this. So 50% of, of fibromyalgia patients have peripheral neuropathy. Yeah. And peripheral neuropathy is a, is a generator mm -hmm. of fibromyalgia. It's a generator of pain for fibromyalgia. Okay. And, and so when, so what I was thinking about was, and, and again, this is evolving. So Dr. Gates, is is a research maven okay this is what he does and 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 it brings tremendous uh value to what he does and what our practice has and but yet then we have to observe this in clinical experience so what i was thinking was when a person has peripheral neuropathy is this the person who comes in and says i get these sharp pains that come and go throughout my body versus the fibromyalgia patient that's mostly feeling uh, who doesn't have the peripheral neuropathy and is mostly feeling sensitivity. And I'm, I'm asking the question here, okay, because I'm thinking about this because I do a lot of the intakes and, and, and I'm trying to delineate between what I'm seeing between mm -hmm. the people who have fibro and peripheral neuropathy and the people who don't maybe haven't developed the peripheral neuropathy yet. If you look up peripheral neuropathy online, you'll see a lot of stuff as it pertains to diabetes. You'll see people talking about individuals losing sensation or having burning in their feet that spreads up to their knees and then involves their hands. Well, that is called a length dependent neuropathy. So basically the nerves farthest away from your heart and your brain start to die first. What they're seeing in fibromyalgia is that you can have a length dependent small fiber neuropathy, but you might, you might have a non length dependent small fiber neuropathy. So basically the pain nerves are dying and degenerating over your entire body. So what you're perceiving as pain and the muscle is actually nerve pain. It's because your nerve fibers are like sparking. Think of them that way and sending too many signals back up to your brain because they're dying and degenerating. Okay. So this is, so indeed this is like when I said this was another leg to the table, I meant another leg to the table of fibromyalgia. And in my world, the legs are the Hashimoto's. The legs are the overfiring brain, too many stress hormones. The legs are the gut. The legs are autoimmunity. And now in my mind, the legs are small fiber neuropathy. This is a huge cornerstone of it. I think this may even be the biggest cornerstone. When okay. you couple small fiber neuropathy with nociceptor dysfunction, this is a, an explanation of the pain and 
you know, upwards of three quarters at least of fibromyalgia patients, mm -hmm. that's pretty significant. And so that's why we, and that's, and again, this is part of what we do because Dr. Gates is a board certified functional neurologist. And as we're morphing into putting these two disciplines together and experimenting over the years with functional medicine for this patient, functional neurology for this patient, then it became more apparent to us that we needed to do them both together. And more recently, we're even morphing way more towards the neurology and the stress responses and the nerve damage for most chronic pain problems, frankly, and getting better and more consistent results. But as you can tell, it's an evolving understanding of what's going on. So you, the peripheral neuropathy patient from 1995, who is a chronic uh, fatigue patient with pain all over that morphed into a fibromyalgia patient and everybody's looking for the silver bullet, you can tell why there is not a silver bullet because, because stress hormones can cause 50 different things. Thyroid goes off, it can affect virtually everything in your body. Gut problems get out, inflammation everywhere. Now you have non-length dependent and length dependent peripheral neuropathy that can pretty much affect every, every nerve in your body. Mm -hmm. And now you have these four pictures that you gotta put up against that particular patient that walks in. But the nice part is, is what you, when you figure out what it is and you, and you pull two or three of those out that happen to be the problem in that patient and you take care of them, mm -hmm the other stuff that goes away that 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 was getting a lot of attention that this for the nausea and this for the, it, the gut and this for the gallbladder and this for the pancreas and this for the pain and this for you know and that right. type of stuff so it's pretty so that's kind of the new understanding of peripheral thing and i don't i don't disagree that this might be the cornerstone for fibro finally right finally. i hate to use that term finally but uh, yeah. you know the next at least in the next huge understanding of fibromyalgia and we've done a lot of broadcasts on fibromyalgia. So if this piques your interest, you may want to watch all of them because we talk about the disparate pieces involved with fibromyalgia patients. You know, we did one on abuse last week and somebody posted on Facebook, why well, wasn't abused in childhood? Well, not everybody is, who has fibromyalgia was exposed to abuse. Not everybody with fibromyalgia has small fiber peripheral neuropathy. But when you understand the central tenets between neuropathy, autoimmunity to the thyroid, irritable bowel syndrome, food intolerances, insomnia, abuse in childhood, trauma throughout life, then you can begin to understand maybe what bubbles that I just outlined apply to you. And we're gonna be doing, um, uh, it's a webinar, it's gonna be a little more than a webinar, but we're gonna be doing a big broadcast on fibromyalgia, and it's gonna be a collective accumulation of all the other broadcasts we've done, so it should really kind of help to bring all the pieces together. We're trying to get that done by the end of the month, so April 2017. So again, Dr. Rutherford, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner, Chiropractor, Dr. Randall Gates, Board Certified Chiropractic Neurologist, Chiropractor. We appreciate you watching and we will see you soon.